Hello and let's talk about the ongoing farmers' protests. The farmers' protests have been going on since November 26th. Right now, hundreds of thousands of farmers are camped in various parts on the outskirts of Delhi. They are determined that they will not go back or end their protest unless their demands have been met by the government. And now this has become more than just a gathering of farmers. This is an All India movement, an All India protest right now. Earlier in the day, the Samyukta Kisan Morcha, which is a conglomeration of farmers' unions or farmers' organizations, made a very strong statement that they would not withdraw until the government accepted its demands. Now, the government has been kind of wishy-washy on this issue. Prime Minister Narendra Modi, of course, said that their intentions were good. He talked about rumours which had been spread regarding farmers and farm laws. But the fact is that the farmers on the ground clearly know what the situation is. They want the three laws which were passed in a very undemocratic manner to be withdrawn. So this is a situation right now, it be likely to escalate in the coming days as well as according to reports and statements by the Samyukt Kisan Morcha, more farmers are on the way to areas in the Delhi-Haryana border. So and the farmers have also come very prepared, they have brought food, they have brought various amenities and they are willing to actually stick it out and confront the government on this issue. We spoke to NewsClick Sonali, who has been on the ground for the past few days. She's talked to farmers, talked to farmers from various parts of Haryana and Punjab who have come here. And she's he tells us what the demands are. Thank you, Sonali, for joining us. So you've been on the ground for the past few days, talking to farmers, seeing the protests that have been continuing. Uh, of course, it's been, it started on the 26th of November and today is the 30th. The farmers still very much uh, enthusiastic, determined that the government listen to the demands. So could you first maybe uh, uh, describe what's happening on the ground right now in the sense that where exactly are the farmers gathering right now? Where have they sort of set up camp? And what is the uh, progression of farmers who are coming from other parts of this country as well? Yeah. So uh, at the moment, there are three uh, main points where the farmers have set up their uh, protest sites. One is, which is the main one, which is the Singhu border. It's a uh, uh, Haryana border uh, near Narela. And uh, that connects uh, Delhi to Punjab. It goes uh, to Kanal and all. Uh, the other border is, again, uh, Delhi Haryana border. It's near Bahadurgarh. It's called Tikri border. That's where a large, a huge number of uh, uh, farmers have come with their tractors. And uh, I've been there, uh, I, and to be honest, I was trying to walk uh, and see where it ends, and it doesn't end. So it's huge. And the third one, which was uh, the latest, uh, is on the Gazipur border, which uh, is Delhi and Uttar Pradesh border, where a couple of hundred farmers from the Western UP have gathered. And uh, they are in support of the farmers from Punjab and Haryana. And uh, obviously, they are uh, also raising their own demands. So <clears throat> that's that. Uh, the farmers are uh, uh, in Punjab and Haryana especially. They've been protesting for last two months. And uh, since the three farm laws were uh, passed. And their, ma their main demand is... Very simple, actually. They are saying that just scrap the farm, farm bills and we'll be out of your way. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about these three farm bills. What are the main problems with these farm bills are? So there are basically three things. Uh, APMC uh, Mondays markets and the Essential Commodity Act. And there is another one. Uh, which uh, promotes the contract farm. So the first thing is the APMC markets. These are markets set up by state governments at district levels. And uh, the farmers can go there and uh, sell their crops and produce to uh, licensed people, licensed persons, or uh, there are comm commission engines also. So, and these markets are also where the government uh, procure uh, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, this is the only place where actually the government procure uh, crops from the farmers, which is a big, uh, it's, it's a big deal for uh, them because uh, if they are not able to sell it to the private parties, the government uh, assures them that we'll sell it. 
and uh, this is also the place where they get msp which is the minimum set, uh, support price which the government sets on few crops not all of them few very few in fact uh, but again there ha uh, there is corruption in this system we agree with that there are uh, they have you know farmers are uh, given not given msp or uh, they are not making enough profit which is true but that does not mean that you do away with the system because uh, now the government is saying that we have given farmers the freedom to go and sell their produce anywhere in the country how in our country 60 more than 60% of the farmers they have small or marginal holdings they don't have huge crops they don't have huge amount of crops so you can't expect a farmer from let's say from punjab and uh, go all the way to kerala and sell his produce that will be that is just ridiculous for him because he will uh, he will not even like make profit he will be in debt forever just for the travel it's a huge country you can't do this and uh, also that the government is saying like you know you don't have to go anywhere the traders can come and uh, buy stuff right from your farms that's also problematic because again small and marginal farmers you know they don't have huge crops they don't have huge amount of uh, uh, produce so they will not be in a good position to bargain the price and the government again like with this the main uh, demand for the farmers is that government gives them in written that it will continue to set a uh, minimum support price so at least they have some sort of uh, assurance that you no know, you know this is this is the the limit uh, this is this much we will get for our crop but the government i don't know what is their point like they are saying that you know uh, we will still continue to set uh, minimum support price but we can't just go by their words and the farmers can't just go by their words so uh, that's one thing the other thing is the essential commodities act uh, the government has made amendment in that so basically that act provides that uh, you know food grains uh, uh, stockers uh, stock uh, holders or traders can only uh, stock a certain amount of food grains and uh, food stuff and government also can regulate their prices so it's not completely left to the market now what the government has done they are saying that the government will only regulate the prices and the stock amount if there is some sort of emergency like if there is a war or famine or if there is a food grain crisis what this will do even like uh, eventually is that they, you have given free hand to the big uh, traders Absolutely. that they can stock as much uh food grains or you know things like edible oil oils or potatoes i mean we can see like this is a everyday uh, example like onion we can, we every year we see onion prices soar in a particular season because there is holding and it's not something uh, which is a rumor it's true there are reports that there is holding uh, for uh, of onions what they do is just they stop the supply and the, the demand uh, goes up and they can just sell it on a like on much expensive uh, prices so that's the point and the government is completely letting go of its responsibility to maintain that you know the people in the country they still have food to eat and the third point which is the contract farming it uh, the government has allowed that the uh, farmers can go in agreement with the, a sponsor company which will uh, provide them like they can uh, go into a contract and say you know you uh, produce this this particular crop this much amount and you can see like not let's see if a chips company they want uh, say you know you should uh, grow wheat or whatever you have to grow potatoes for them 
So what are we going to eat? Chips and potatoes and that's all. This is, uh, you are essentially putting our food security at stake. And in a country where we are, like India is doing so horrible on global hunger index and still the government is willing to go ahead with this, it's just astonishing. Absolutely. So Sonali, I uh, so want to talk to you about basically what the farmers have been saying. You raised these three issues, which uh, are very important, of course. Now, one of the key arguments being made by supporters of the government, especially, is that, you know, uh, the far, this is all kind of a rumor being spread by the opposition and, you know, certain vested interests. And this is actually going to liberate the farmers. And we have a good, very powerful cross-section of farmers of various uh, backgrounds, uh, like you said, a lot of mid uh, mid level farmers, a lot of some farmers with some more land, a lot of agricultural workers. So, uh, how are they basically responding to this claim that you know that this is all uh, just some kind of rumor mongering by vested interests against uh, the farm against the government? I think this is the go to uh, answer of this government for anything, like for anything. So if the farmers, and the thing is, the farmers are saying, if it is for our benefit, then why are we on streets? And they are not ill-informed farmers, or if, and it's not like they don't know about agriculture. They know about agriculture more than you and me and the people who are sitting in AC offices and making policies, definitely, because this is their livelihood. So if the government is so sure that it's what it's doing is right, and then talk to them, convince them. Nobody is asking you. Nobody is stopping the government from talking to the farmers. If and because and the thing is because they don't have an answer. Exactly. They don't have an answer. You don't. You do All this. All these systems are going to basically kill the agriculture sector in our country. They are just going to promote corporate corporatization of uh, agriculture and the farmers are going to lose their lands also because eventually that's what's going to happen if the government is so sure that this won't happen then give us then give the farmers not us but give the farmers a concrete plan okay you know this will not happen or even for the msp why the government is not giving them in written that msp will be there forever absolutely right and in this context, one interesting thing that has come out, of course, is the fact that you mentioned at the beginning also that the farmers have been protesting for months. And it is also clear that they have actually been preparing for this protest for months as well, because there's been reports which NewsClick has extensively covered of the fact that they have actually brought, uh, say, food material. They have brought, and they, as in they, they came prepared knowing that this is going to be a long struggle. So could you maybe talk a bit about the mood on the ground with that as well? It's, um, it's it's actually very uh, positive. You know, you get a very positive feeling, especially in this uh, time when there is a pandemic going on. Farmers are so well prepared. They are saying like, we can stay on the streets for six months. And I talked to a few of them. They said like, you know, we can do this in batches. We are actually going to do this in batches. Like we are here and some more people will come and people will go back. Because they also know you can't sustain uh, if everybody is on the street all the time. You cannot sustain a long, long uh, protest. And uh, they know that this will be a long protest uh, going by the history of this government because it is not willing to listen to anyone. Um, uh, you know, I went to, I think on Saturday and yesterday also, but. You know, uh, I reached there at 10 in the morning and uh, people from different villages, because they are obviously coming from different villages, they are, uh, so they know these people, uh, uh, they are living in like, even though they're all there, but they're still like in their own groups and everything. Right. And they were all making food in the morning. It was like, you know, the government can do whatever it wants to do, but we are here till these all three farm bills are scrapped. Absolutely. And it does look like uh, Amit Shah has uh, said that there's a discussion planned on the third. Although, uh, again, like you said, for instance, the government is uh, refusing to give any kind of commitments. One of the key demands the government has continued, been continuing to make is that 
farmers come to an assigned spot and sit there and protest. And that has been a very interesting development because farmers have said that they will not do that. So could you tell us yeah. why this is the See, case? Uh, the assigned spot which the government has mentioned is the Burari ground. It's in one corner of Delhi. Nobody will go there. I think the government doesn't understand the whole purpose of protest in general because you are protesting. So the people and the government uh, hear what you are trying to say. And you also have to gain uh, solidarity within the people also. Which, which this uh, protest is actually gaining. And that's why I think uh, the government is very scared also. And it, I mean, it, it should be actually. So uh, the Burari ground where the government is sending them, it's a huge ground, but it's in one corner. It's so far away from the government, uh, the, where the actual government is. And these people, they, the, the farmers actually came to go to parliament. Because that's where the farm laws were passed. And it passed in a very uh, undemocratic, let's, if we can say, manner. But still. And so, and there's another thing that uh, some of the farmers are alleging. Uh, I've talked to some leaders and they are alleging that anyone who is going into that ground, the police is taking their whole information, where they are coming from everything. So they are saying that they've created a jail. Anyone who go, goes inside, they are not allowed outside. So once you go in that ground, you will uh, be there for however long the government decides that you should be there. So that's their another uh, issue that uh, they don't want to be kept in, let's, they're, they're calling it a semi-jail. So they are saying like, we are not going to go there. Uh, if the government is, it, if it really wants to talk to us, there will be no conditions applied of her. Absolutely, absolutely. If you want to talk to us, you come and talk to us. We are willing to talk. Right. Yeah. Good. Thank you so much, Sonali, for talking to us. Yeah, thank you, sir. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from the country and the world. Until then, keep watching News Click.